Congratulations, everyone. We have all completed 21 days of fasting and praying, which is so exciting. Uh, more than anything, we hope that you have been encouraged and inspired and you have grown closer to the Lord in these 21 days of fasting and prayer. Well, I'm here to tell you a couple of things happening here at the house and four ways for you to be part of our church community. The first way is through Next Steps. If you're new or newer here, Next Steps is our process to help you become a part of this community at the house. We have three steps through our Next Steps process. Step one is open house lunch. That's a time for you to come to meet some of our team and to have lunch together. Step two is mission and values, where you get to hear the mission, values, and where we're going as a church community. And finally, step three is the house is my home, where you can officially make this house your home church. On February 4th, we'll be hosting step one, which is open house lunch. You can go ahead and RCP online under our coming soon page. The second way to be a part of our church community is through groups. Groups exist to help you grow and develop in community here at the house. Next month, groups begin. I would love for you to go online right now or maybe after service or sometime this week. Go ahead and click under groups. You can go ahead and sign up for a group today. They are live. So go ahead and choose. We have so many incredible groups, but don't forget if you want to grow in your faith and in community, this is one fabulous way to do it. So go ahead and do that today. The third way to be a part of our church community is through events. Events are our one-time experiences to help inspire and encourage our church community. Today, immediately after service, we will be doing church baptisms. Today, if you would like to be part of that, you can go ahead and find one of our leaders and spontaneously, if there's anybody here today that wants to be baptized, we would love to be a part of that special moment. Tonight, we would love to invite you back here for a worship night with Michelle Lutz. It's going to be a wonderful time as we celebrate the end of 21 days of fasting and prayer, but especially as we launch into 2024, let's set the tone for your year. Let's give God not only our first, but our best. And let's enter in with thanksgiving and praise, as the psalm says. We're going to enter his courts. We're going to enter this year. We're going to enter the season with thanksgiving and praise. So we want to invite you to come back tonight. It's going to be a great time. The fourth way to be a part of our church community is through classes. Classes exist to help you learn biblical principles to grow your faith. Starting next month, we are going to begin our next series of classes with Pastor Barbara Wright titled, The Life and Times of Jesus. If you've ever wanted to learn more about Jesus, I wanna encourage you, sign up today under our Coming Soon page. Take these opportunities to really grow and engage your faith. We want to congratulate you again for joining with us in your 21 days of fasting and prayer. If you completed 21 days of fasting and prayer, I mean, just give yourself a pat on the back. It is no easy feat to do something for that long. But more than that, just know that the Lord is pleased and proud of you. We can't wait to see you back here tonight. Again, as we seek the Lord, it's going to be a great time. Hey, welcome to the house. My name is Wes. My wife, Vanessa, and I, we're the lead pastors here. And wherever you're watching from, just want to say thanks so much for joining us. Welcome home. And uh, thank you to those of you you've been liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, all the, all the good stuff that helps get the message out. Just want to say thank you so much for doing that. Uh, if you have any questions about who we are, what we're about, what we believe, or how you can be a part, you can check out thehousela.org. You'll see all kinds of new updates on our website right now, which are so exciting. Service times, directions, all of that exciting up, uh, events that are coming up around the corner. For all of the most up-to-date information, check out thehousela.org. Today, we're continuing on uh, this series. It's actually the last part of that series on all things new. 
all things new. And today we're talking about get connected, getting connected. So we talked uh, the first week about uh, getting clear on our goals. Uh, and then uh, the second week we talked about community, being clear on, on the community. And then last week we talked about forgiveness and getting rid of those weights. And today we're going to talk about getting connected, specifically getting connected with God. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can check out thehousela.org. Okay, let's jump in. Um, all things new, getting connected. There's something that's come up recently uh, called compassion or outrage fatigue. Maybe you've heard the phrase of, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm so concerned about this. I'm so outraged. Oh, this is an outrage. Can you believe this is an outrage? Share if you agree. Share if you care. Or uh, Christians love this one. Share in the next 24 hours if you love Jesus or if you would deny Christ, just keep scrolling by. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to scroll by. I'm, I care about Jesus. I love Jesus with all my heart. That doesn't mean that if I love him, I'm going to share a Facebook post. Anyways, but the outrage. There's outrage, outrage, outrage. And what it has turned into, it's turned into compassion or outrage fatigue. Because here's what's happened. We've turned uh, this like a term like deeply concerned. A deeply concerned used to be for things that were deeply concerning. There used to be things, you know, back in the day, I, you know, I'm deeply concerned about the Vietnam War and young men and young women getting shipped across and they're, they're coming home in bags. I'm deeply concerned about this. There'd be like people with actual, true, deep concerns. I'm deeply concerned about world hunger. And, and, I, and I saw some videos about children in these other countries and they've got no food and they've got no water. I'm deeply concerned about those things. And somewhere in the last couple of years, specifically in the last you know, five to 10, is that we're deeply concerned has turned into not only when we're talking about wars and famines, but it's the same exact phrase we talk about when junior high and middle school students walk through our neighborhoods and throw the trash on the ground. Facebook group. Oh, I'm deeply concerned about the youth of today. I'm deeply concerned about everything that's going on in the neighborhood. I'm deeply concerned about what happened at that coffee shop. You know, they, they got rid of the straws and so I'm deeply concerned about that. And people say, are you not concerned? Well, yeah, I'm already at a level 10 concern and then here's what happens. You're already at a level 10 concern. And then someone brings something that's even more concerning and more valuable of your concern. And you've got no more notches left to turn up. You're like, there, there's no 11. There's no level 11 in my life. I'm already at level 10, deeply concerned. And then here's what happened. People just go, you know what? Let's just circle back uh, next quarter. Um, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to go off social media. I'm going to stop watching the news. I'm going to stop sharing stuff. I got to pull away. I just, hey, we're going to circle back. I'm, I'm done. I'm compassion fatigued. I am outrage fatigued. Let me read you something from psychology today. Compassion fatigue is where people can experience anxiety, emotional symptoms, as they spend so much of their emotional resources caring for and worrying about others in need. This happens a lot in the nonprofit world, especially. Outrage fatigue, this is also in psychology today. Outrage fatigue is a related experience where one experiences exhaustion, cynicism, apathy, and hopelessness as they try to take on too many social, political, legal, or economic campaigns at once. You would think that this was written like yesterday. This was written in 2017. In 2017, Psychology Today was talking about compassion fatigue and outrage fatigue. Think of all of the, the necessary compassion and outrage that has happened since that point in the earth, in those last six or seven years. Like, I'm already at level 10 in 2017, and then 2020 happens, and then 2021, and, 20, and 23, I'm like, I'm already, I'm out, I'm spent, I'm exhausted. It can often be summed up by that, uh, that bumper sticker. It says, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. What about 
if we just rephrase that to say, I was outraged about a lot. And while your cause seems really, really important, I'm just a little emotionally exhausted and spent. And so maybe we can come back later when my emotional you know, tank is filled up again. Let's take a closer look about specifically about the, that, that worry and that exhaustion that pulls us away. In Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, tells the story of Jesus spending some time with some of his very close friends, Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead, and Mary and Martha, it's three siblings. Verse 38 says this, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. So Mary's sitting at Jesus' feet, listening while Jesus taught. Martha was distracted by the big dinner. She's got the bumper sticker. She's preparing. She came to Jesus and she's like, Lord, hold on, everyone, Jesus, hold on. Let me get through the crowd here. Everyone's teaching, he's listening. Hey, Lord, listen, doesn't seem, doesn't it seem unfair to you God of all justice and God of all mercy. Doesn't it seem unfair that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her, you tell her. She's not listening to me. I asked her for help. I text her, hey, come help with the dishes. And she didn't respond. She put her phone on do not disturb, but she seems to listen to you, Jesus. Can you tell my sister to come help me? And the Lord, he looked at her with such compassion. He says, my dear Martha. He's not looking down at her. He goes, Martha, you are worried, it's the word worried there, and you're upset, outraged over all these details. You're worried, you're outraged. There's only one thing that you really need to be deeply concerned about. There's only one thing that you need to be concerned about. And Mary, she's discovered that thing and it will not be taken from her. Does worry actually do anything? Does outrage actually do anything? Martha in the story has a very realistic view of the problem and it seems like she's the only person doing anything about it. Like guests coming over unannounced, I've got so much to do and I've got so little time. This is the one thing that worry does do. Worry gives me the feeling of doing something without accomplishing anything. It makes it feel like you're doing something. Well, what are you doing? I'm, I'm worrying. One of my family members once told me the story. He, he went to this restaurant. Uh, it's like one of those 24 hour diners, like late at night. And there was two waitresses there and they were like, and he just ordered like, you know, steak and eggs or something like that. And these two waitresses are there and they were just wiping on all these tables, just constantly going, 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 going. And finally he goes, can I ask you a question? What are you guys doing? Like they were wiping down the same tables. They're going really fast, they're going really fast. And finally one of them leans over and he's like, you see that one other person here in this restaurant? That's the owner. That's what some of us feel like with worry. Worry, we're just, I, I gotta be doing something. I gotta be doing something. Worry is running in circles masquerading as achievement. I'm doing something, right? Well, no, you've already wiped that section of the table. Wiping it again isn't gonna make it any cleaner. You've already, you know, you thought that thought of, oh my goodness, what if such and such happens? You've worried about it. What is doing that again? It's just wiping the same section of a table all over again. So then, what do we do when we see an issue or problem that actually makes us feel upset or worried? Like there's a lot to look around in our world right now. This is, hey, actually, pastor, there are some things that we should be either worried or outraged about. Verse 41, the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and you are upset or outraged is the word I'm using over all these details. There's only one thing really worth being concerned about right here. Mary, she's found it. She's discovered it. She's caught it it's not gonna be taken away from her. Worry doesn't accomplish anything, but, but you know what does? Worship does. Worry doesn't do anything, but worship does. There's a story a recording in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, where Judah is surrounded, the, the, the nation of Judah, it's the northern part of Israel. 
they're surrounded by their enemies. There's like four or five different armies all surrounding them. They're like, we don't even know what to do. Um, they gathered together, they prayed. King Jehoshaphat actually says, we do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. That was his prayer. I don't know what to do. My eyes are on you. And this prophet, Jehaziel, he had this word from God. And he's like, hey, listen, people of Judah and Jerusalem, King Jehoshaphat, all of you guys, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army that's way bigger than you guys. This battle that you're facing right here, this is not yours. This is God's. This thing that you want to worry about, this thing that you want to be frustrated or outraged about, this is not your battle. This, this belongs to God. And this is what they ended up doing. This is recorded in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. It says this. He says, believe in the Lord your God, and you'll be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. Some good faith scriptures there. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they're saying. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Okay. The guys in skinny jeans and guitars are walking ahead of the guys with shields and swords and machine guns, okay? Not machine guns, but you know what I mean, right? What a day to be on the worship team. Maybe you feel like, I want to be on the worship team. Not on that day, my friend. On that day, you probably want to call in sick. This is what happened at verse 22. At the very moment that they begin to sing and give praises, the Lord caused those armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves and they destroyed each other. Judah won that battle that day, not because they fought and they were superior. They had a superior military army. No, no, they didn't. They were in a really bad spot. They won the battle that day because they worshiped and then God fought on their behalf. Worship accomplishes what worry never can. A couple things that worship does. Worship helps you focus on God. It magnified the Lord with me, make his name great. Magnified, he doesn't get bigger, but he gets bigger in my focus as I worship him. Worship actually gives God a throne. Psalm 22, three says that He is enthroned in the praises of his people. So when I praise, it gives God a place. It's like, oh, hey, hey, just you grab, grab a seat right here. It gives him a place to come and sit. Worship confuses the enemy like we just read here, and worship gives God space to rescue. When you are in the front of your own battle, that battle's on you. But when you worship in a battle, that battle's on God. Our job is to worship. It's God's job to rescue and to redeem. Back to the text. Mary's outraged about all these other things. She's worried about all these other things. Uh, or excuse me, Martha is outraged by all the wrong things. She's worried about all the wrong things. She's deeply concerned, but for the wrong things. And Jesus says, there's one thing really worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. The one thing that should cause the most concern, I am deeply concerned, the thing that you should just use that phrase of deeply concerned. You don't want to just throw it around about trash in the neighborhood, about a pet you know, dog that got away. I'm deeply concerned. You can be concerned for those things. But the thing that should concern you most is God's presence in your life. When he shows up versus when he doesn't show up, when you can hear his whisper, when you can sense that he's near, that is the thing that should occupy that phrase of deeply concerned. What would it look like if we as a people, instead of worrying, we worshiped and we allowed God to work on our behalf? That's why tonight at church, we're going to have a citywide worship night and we're going to worship. We're going to put God out at the front of our year. Just like in this text, we're going to put God at the front of our year and say, God, we're going to worship you first. We're going to worship you most and we're going to allow you to fight on our behalf. Let me give you two practical points for a fresh start here in 2024. Number one, join a connect group. All of our connect groups start next week. Be a part of the community. 
dedicate yourself, say, I'm gonna find a group. You can go online to thehousela.org and find a group and say, you know what, we're, gonna, we're not gonna uh, worry together, we're gonna worship together. Number two, come to the citywide worship night tonight. Say, I'm going to make it a point to be here, to worship, to put God at the first part of my year. Let me pray for you as we close. Jesus, thank you so much for my friends and whatever they're facing, I'm praying God that they're not gonna take worry with them but that they will worship in the midst of their battle and you will fight on their behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, any questions or how to join us for a service, check out thehousela.org. Send it to a friend. Invite a friend to come tonight and say, man, let's go to church. We're gonna go to a worship night, citywide worship night. Lots of churches are gonna be here. It wouldn't be the same without you. So we look forward to hopefully seeing you there. Lastly, just wanna say a big thank you to those of you you have sponsored this church generously. You've partnered with us and I just want to say thank you so much for that. If you want to join that journey, check out thehousela.org slash give. God bless and I can't wait to see you back next week here at the house.